Hey movie buffs, I hope you're having a good day. So when we think about the gangster and crime genre, obviously films such as Goodfellas, Casino and Long Good Friday all come to mind, but there are so many hidden gems that really deserve more attention. So it's time for another video in which I take a look back at 5 of the most underrated gangster movies that really are must see. Number 5. The Craze Power is the key word when it comes to the craze from 1991. It's the central theme of the movie and of course extremely relevant to everything the real Cray twins aspire to achieve. It's an overbearing piece of work that has you on the edge of your seat with this sense of dread and tension. And it walks the line of having you both respect and be disgusted by the craze and the power they wanted to have over others looms over you when you watch this film. The performances are outstanding. The Cray twins are portrayed by real life brothers Gary and Martin Kemp, who give nuanced and incredibly convincing performances. I think the actors being brothers serve this film so well. There is something very special about that brotherly bond and they key into that in a bid to unearth a true depiction of the Cray's sibling love, but at the same time rivalry. I do think Martin Kemp deserves special mention. A member of pop band Spandau Ballet, believe it or not, not many know about his work as a serious actor, who could be incredibly gritty, obviously in this film, and also he was pretty hard as nails when he was in soap opera EastEnders in the 90s for a long time. He was kind of the highlight for that show for me growing up when I was forced to watch it with my family. Yeah, I did say forced. The craze does so well at recreating the time period and it shows so much attention to detail and reverence for the 1960s. The costumes, sets and music all contribute to a sense of authenticity and truth that is often missing in a lot of gangster films. The film keys into a sense that home is where the heart is as the craze love their family and place of origin. So it's almost a sentimental film but filtered through the craze messed up view of everything. This movie also captures the delusion of the gangster lifestyle how the craze ended up believing their own hype and it's a fascinating case study of what happens when you have a massive inferiority complex that is so serious it becomes dangerous and ultimately violent <laughs> just shut <up> this <laughs> until we let you off lightly <laughs> hear me <laughs> say thank you number four tokyo drifter Watch this film and you will not believe it was made in 1966. Tokyo Drifter tells the story of a Yakuza named Tetsu who is forced to leave his gang after they disband. However, he refuses to betray his boss when he's offered a new position in a rival group. So through the film he's constantly pursued by gangsters who want to kill him. Ah, a classic gangster movie plot. But keep in mind this was 1966. This is one of the films that did it first and was incredibly innovative for the time. Tokyo Drifter is one of the most ahead of its time forward thinking films ever made really. This movie could stand toe to toe with any gangster film made today and in many instances it completely overshadows plenty of modern ones. The ambition on display by director Seijun Suzuki is stunning here. He's fearless and produces a piece of work that is fast paced, unpredictable and devastating. I can't believe how much power this movie has for a film made in 1966, it just feels like it's knee deep in the 70s, at least, maybe even the 80s. I can only imagine watching this in cinemas back in the 60s, people must have been truly blown away. The film looks fantastic not only for its time but today too. It leaps off the screen with strong vibrant colours and in your face imagery. Suzuki really was making a statement and heading in a bold new direction. And Tokyo Drifter has gone on to influence so many filmmakers, with Quentin Tarantino among others, referencing the movie and its director. Tokyo Drifter has a relentless feeling of ruthlessness running throughout. There's no mercy shown for Tetsu, especially by the insane crime boss Karuta, who is a savage villain. It's a film about loyalty, respect and things spiralling out of control but it's delivered in a layered and nuanced way. Nothing is black and white and Tetsu isn't even necessarily the good guy as the script makes a point of being about the senseless back and forth that goes on in the Yakuza world where no one is really right. Number 3. Layer Cake One of the coolest movies on this list is 2004's Layer Cake. 
This movie is a blast, full of slick editing and fun visuals, a lot like Guy Ritchie's gangster films, but combining that style with the intimacy of old school 70s British gangster movies. Lockstock and Snatch get a lot of deserved praise, but I think Layer Cake deserves just as much. It was just as influential in my book, full of great momentum, energy and grit that many films have tried to recreate since. The distinctive colour palette helps make Layer Cake memorable, as the movie mixes desaturated colours, which create a feeling of grit and realism, with moments of brightness that are used to great effect, such as the red dress worn by Sienna Miller's character. The colour completely conveys whatever mood director Matthew Vaughan is trying to convey, and the film feels so alive and involving because of that. One of the strongest elements of Layer Cake is the performance from a young Daniel Craig. This was the role that made people take notice and consider him for the role he's now most known for, James Bond. And it's not hard to see why. He immediately makes an impact with some great charisma and a real charm. And I think if he hadn't have taken the role of Bond, he'd likely have gone on to be a recurring actor in the gangster genre because he feels right at home in Layer Cake. Layer Cake has a complex and engaging plot full of twists and turns and focuses on themes such as loyalty, betrayal, free will and consequences of our actions. This character really stands out because he's not necessarily set up to lose like a lot of the characters in gangster movies at the time. He's resourceful and has so much experience in this dangerous world that he's learned how to navigate it by thinking on his feet and being one step ahead. Layer Cake is a wonderfully fun film full of sharp, witty dialogue, great acting and stellar direction. It stands tall as one of the best modern gangster movies. Everything just comes together to create such a natural, smooth and cool atmosphere. And you can see why this film was basically the birth of the next James Bond. You're f***ing joking! It doesn't work like that! Don't keep f***ing saying that to me! Number 2. Black Mass Black Mass is an incredibly bleak and uncompromising look at famous South Boston gangster James Whitey Bulger. Released in 2015, it's a wonderfully acted film with a very compelling story. It didn't really get the recognition it deserved and that's a real shame because this is one of the most honest looks at a gangster's life I've ever seen. Johnny Depp is terrifying as Whitey. Depp had got a reputation for doing comedic and family movie roles around this time and so to change things up, he decided to, out of nowhere, show us why he's still one of the greatest actors on the planet. He completely transforms into Whitey Bulger. And there is something so sinister about his performance, he honestly has you on the edge of your seat with such a cold stare and threatening tone when he speaks. And you can cut the tension with a knife. What's the, fa what's the family secret recipe? It's, gr it's ground garlic and a little bit of soy. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. I thought it was a family secret. <laughs> it's a recipe. No. No. You said to me, this is a family secret, and you gave it up to me, boom. Just fucking like that. Don't look to John, because he's not going to fucking help you. I think one of the reasons this film might have struggled to be a success is it does not shy away from showing intense and dark behaviour from this character, often toward women. Whitey doesn't really have any limits, and if anyone gives him even the slightest reason to suspect them, their life is in trouble, man, woman or child. Quite simply put, Whitey Bulger was an absolute nutter, and the film doesn't sugarcoat him in any way. Perhaps the most impressive thing about Black Mass besides how daring it is, is it manages to actually humanise a character like Whitey, despite showing us his heinous crimes in an unfiltered way. Somehow the movie shows us a side of him that can be vulnerable and even sympathetic at times, such as moments with his mother and his friends around him. There is some good in there buried deep beneath the aggression, and he is at times shown to be a tragic character a victim of his surroundings, unable to question his own morals because he's so knee deep into this and he crossed the line long ago. I highly recommend Black Mass, it's a gripping piece of work that deserves way more attention than it received. You don't really get movies like this anymore, it's one of the last truly authentic gangster films. 
Number one, killing them softly. Andrew Dominic, the guy who brought us one of the most underappreciated films ever in 2007's Assassination of Jesse James by Coward Robert Ford with Brad Pitt and Casey Affleck. Check it out, it's fantastic. Follows it up with this low-key, downbeat gangster film from 2012, also starring Brad Pitt. Killing Them Softly tells the story of a hitman named Jackie Cogan, played by Pitt, who is hired to investigate a robbery that took place during a poker game. The movie is set against the backdrop of the 2008 financial crisis, which adds an interesting layer to the story. Andrew Dominic is such an underrated director, Killing Them Softly is incredibly well made. His direction is stylish and confident, and the cinematography is fantastic. It's one of the most realistic and lived-in gangster films in many years. The portrayal of the criminal underworld is so absorbing and at the same time horrific, as this film revels in the filth and dark undertones of an already sick and twisted profession. It goes even further than you'd expect. Brad Pitt nails it here, somehow he makes a hitman seem like someone you want to go out for a drink with. He's very charismatic and easygoing, and somehow brings some morals into his pretty evil profession. Dominic delivers in a way that is usually reserved for gangster master Martin Scorsese, and gives us despicable people who he managed to enjoy spending time with. In addition to Brad Pitt, there's also a great performance from James Gandolfini of Sopranos fame, and there's a superb sit-down scene between the two that is a masterclass of acting. Gandolfini and Pitt sitting there talking is just as riveting as an action scene would be. I haven't any more of those. Phone your ass if you do. I was drinking before you got out of your father's cock. Don't tell me what I do. The movie has several uncompromising and violent moments, and in the next minute, things suddenly turn light-hearted and characters are joking around, kind of keying into the Quentin Tarantino style we know and love. Dominic is taking it a step forward, though, with his own unique take on dialogue and characters. It's interesting how Killing Them Softly uses the gangster genre to also comment on large societal issues. It's a scathing critique of capitalism and the American dream, and it's not afraid to be political and have something honest and worthwhile to say. Killing Them Softly is honestly one of the best modern hidden gems out there. It's a stunning piece of work from a director who deserves so much more recognition, and it was great to see Brad Pitt decide to go down a dirty, gritty route once again and show he could still deliver in smaller projects. And of course, Gandalfini adds his credibility to the film too. So there you have it guys, if you're looking for something new to check out in the gangster genre, be sure to give these movies a watch and let me know what you think. So if you enjoyed this video please consider pressing subscribe and clicking on another video on the screen now. On this channel we talk about gangster movies and much more movie geek content all the time. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.